In today's video, a first of its kind study in obese women, and we're working with Science with Steve. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Vella from ProPhysique.com, and today I got Steve Bogrand from ProPhysique.com, and uh, we got Science with Steve. So you know we're gonna talk a little bit about the science, and what we found was a very interesting, interesting study in only women, only women. And only obese women. Only obese women, meaning they had a BMI of 30 or greater. And what I saw was the mean range for BMI was like 37, 38, so well above yeah. that. Yeah, so when you look at how they medically classify it, they classified into obese one, two, or three. So that would put most of those individuals into the obesity level two category. Yeah, so what the study was interesting to me was I think a lot of times when people are looking at losing body fat, when we have consults with clients, they say, should I just focus on losing the weight first and then do some resistance training after? And I think there's multiple reasons why this study would kind of give us a reason to say, no, that's not the best approach. Yeah, it's interesting because they actually, they had four different groups. Um, and so you had your control group, you had an aerobic exercise only group, you had a resistance exercise only group, and then you had a combined group that did both aerobic and resistance training. And if you get through this study, you'll see that I think there are definitely some really nice benefits of the combined approach uh, that kind of maybe challenge some of the conventional thought processes that people have of, well, if I just need to diet, I should just diet. Or uh, I can't put on weight um, with muscle if I'm doing cardio. And a lot of people worry about these things. And I think this is a really great study that shows us that in women in particular, yeah. those things might not be as much of a concern in terms of combining exercise modalities. Well, I think at times we can focus on only the physical outcome, but we're gonna address something that happened um, to the psyche of the individuals here as well. Yeah, so one of my favorite parts about this was that the individuals in the combined exercise categories actually had the most improvements on depressive symptoms, uh, which is huge, especially for anybody struggling with that, yep. um, which a lot of people who are in that really sedentary lifestyle can experience. Um, and along with that, they had the best improvements of qu overall quality of life yep. ratings. So they weren't just looking at things like body composition, strength. Um, they were looking at those things, but they were also looking at other pieces of the puzzle. Things that I think quite often we associate weight loss with, but aren't necessarily one and the same. So the other interesting thing that they did here that made the study nice was that they had the same time for each group. So if you were in a combined group, you weren't doing twice as much work. Correct. Based on the amount of time you were like, you know, training. Right. And so you were either doing the 150 minutes a week of combined exercise, of resistance training only, or of cardio only. Which oddly enough, the resistance training only group had the most dropouts out of any of the groups. Yeah, that's interesting to me. So if they were only doing resistance training, they had the highest dropout. The combined group had the least dropout. Correct. Which is a really nice argument that we can not have to overdo the resistance training to still see positive benefit, not only in body composition, but also in some of these other psychological aspects that, again, we really tend to overlook. Now, one thing that this study did was they actually oversaw the resistance training sessions. So just my thinking here, going out on a limb, if you go to the gym and you have somebody pushing you, you're going to progressively get stronger and get pushed harder. And I'm wondering if some of the dropout was, oh, this is getting hard. <laughs> uh, it may very well have been. Uh, they had the way that they were going to increase weights and intensity for those workouts already set up in terms of uh, program design. Uh, and specifically, if those were a little bit harder than what maybe most people were comfortable with, um, that absolutely could be part of it, especially given that everybody that was coming into this did not meet activity criteria. And so they may have been scared of injury um, and many other things in terms of just not being comfortable with it or the general being in a gym feeling in itself. Yeah. The nice part about this was is that it, it was with professionals. It was overseen. It was not in a generalized gym. So I think they also still tried to do some things to minimize that. But at a certain point, resistance training can be hard and uncomfortable to some degree. Yeah. And I think one of the things I saw here in this study as well was that through the course of it, um, the study participants dropped off, like we said, the most in the group where, you know, where you and I might just thrive in like a resistance <laughs> group. Right. Um, and I think sometimes we think of cardio as bad, 
and maybe some females might think of resistance training as bad. Whereas they actually also saw the best improvements in, in BMI and weight, right, in the combined group. Right, um, and so there's this interesting thing that I think a lot of people still have this idea of lifting as a masculine or a more masculine activity in general for weight training. Um, and that can, I think, be a barrier to exercise and partaking in that. Because there were a lot of people for the resistance training group, when they found out what group they were assigned to, they were just like, nah, dog. And they were like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. So just so you guys understand the way these studies work is you apply for the study, they randomly assign you to a group. What this does is it kind of prevents the research from being biased towards what people want to do. They're assigned to a group. Now, there's nothing preventing them from going, oh, I got the group that I didn't want to get. <laughs> I'm not coming back to the study. He and I have both participated in as participants and as assistants in studies. He's actually authored, co-authored a, a paper. So you, you, you understand that it's challenging to get someone to get up, go into a room and get studied at sometimes five, six, seven in the morning, right? It's, it's not that easy. The body composition analysis, I think is actually the hardest part Yeah. because if you want to ha make sure that you are fitting the criteria for how to make that as accurate as possible, it does include those individuals getting there typically fasted very early in the morning um, to make sure that those pre and post testing numbers are correct. But even making sure that people are exercising on a normal basis can be a challenge. Typically they're recruiting in the colleges. Yeah. Uh, and so for this one, it's really no different there. So it's more convenient for these individuals, but it's still not necessarily a convenience factor for everybody. And that's, there's always gonna be a barrier for that. And time of course is one of the reasons that they are listing for why people have dropped out. Yeah, and I think the other thing to consider, so, you know, we as a company coach a lot of females. We have a lot of people enter our challenge and I think the idea of resistance training, women don't have the same capacity, generally speaking, to put on muscle like a man, right? We don't have the same hormone profile. We don't have the same muscular profile. So resistance training for women, it just seems to have this compound effect where they're able to lose body fat. You know, we've seen regularly in our 90 day challenge, women lose 30 pounds while they started lifting weights. Yep. And so when people look at a fat loss and they say, okay, this person lost 30 pounds in 12 weeks or 90 days, the math doesn't add up. They had to be in this big of a deficit. And I'm like, the body is dynamic. Yes. And that's why I like this study because it's obese women who started lifting and doing a cardiovascular component with time constraints and saw the best progress of all the groups. And with zero outline on dietary interventions, they did not change anything in terms of these women's diets either. So they saw improvement simply from activity, simply from lifting and expenditure. Which now, is I will cool. say this, all the groups that did something saw an improvement. But what we saw was for this length of time that this group that, that did the combined effort had the best, which when you extrapolate that out, it would probably be significantly better because the more time we have with the resistance training, the more adaptations we're going to get, more lean body mass, improvements in metabolism. Also something interesting, the combined group reduced their sitting time pretty significantly. Which for me is so huge. Uh, in a time when human beings are becoming more and more sedentary with how jobs work, um, and most of us not recognizing that simply the amount of time that you sit during the day is a risk factor for disease, is just absolutely like remarkable. It is such a big deal and one that I think a lot of people take for granted. Yeah. So when you reduce that sitting time, you reduce your risk for some of the comorbidities that are happening um, that we see as large risk factors and why a lot of people, you know, maybe die at younger ages nowadays. Yeah, I mean, you would never consider sitting to be like smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol, but when you look at the facts of, you know, I have a study on my desktop right here that I was just looking at, since the 1960s, um, as much as 60% of daily working acquired a physical component. Now it's as low as 20%. And that was as of 2010. And I'm gonna suggest that since 2010, it's gotten even less because think about how much you sit per day. If you have a job, you sit in your car, you sit at your desk, you come home and sit on your couch. And if you don't force yourself to get up and move more, then that can become a problem. And you know, I've documented it from having a treadmill at my house. I've been able to stay leaner with way less effort than I ever thought would be possible just through movement. Yep. And it, it is this common misconception. They say, well, if I meet activity guidelines, 
then I don't have to worry about the same risk factors. And it's, no, no, these are now separate things that we've seen. You want to meet activity guidelines, but you also want to minimize sitting time. So again, just hugely beneficial for getting people to simply be moving more. And we know and have seen, again, that that is going to be a positive benefit for overall health. Yeah, so if you have the knowledge and now you need a reason to do it, We've got a transformation challenge that starts in about two weeks. The registration is open now. You get over a hundred meal and training plans. You get a private support group. You get us. We're going to be doing live videos, answering questions, along with all the coaches for Pro Physique. That's the goal. You get a community of people that are like-minded and you get the results that you're probably not going to get on your own if you haven't to this point. So knowledge plus some deadlines, it's a very good combination. Um, and a lot of support in those groups too. Yeah. Yep. A lot of people that are uplifting and really encouraging, which yep. makes a big difference for those of us that maybe feel like we don't have that same kind of support group ready for us. Well, to be honest, I myself, I don't get out of shape anymore. So sometimes it can be hard to understand what somebody's going through. However, when you see the people that are losing, you know, through multiple challenges, one of our uh, top five finishers has lost over a hundred pounds through multiple challenges she's done with us. When you see that, um, you understand the power of community and the power of motivation and, and a deadline. Yeah, we're social creatures. We need it. So I, I think there's just so many really great things that the challenge helps to offer. So, yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this study. Comment below if you enjoy Science with Steve time. We're going to bring more content uh, if you enjoy female-specific research because there's not a lot of it out there. Um, so, you know, finding this was, was a blessing. And I'm going to bring more mustache. <laughs>